Good morning. The world I grew up in was a world, I guess, influenced by the mechanics, the physics of Isaac Newton way back a few hundred years ago. He describes the world as a mechanistic universe, like a giant machine with all its individual parts and everything's individual and autonomous. And it's put together in a machine and there's cogs and wheels and levers and springs and all sorts of bits and pieces that make the machine work. And if something, if the machine breaks down, you go in, you find the broken bit, you replace it or fix it, put it all back together and it all works. And in this picture, God's up there. God's at a distance. God's out there, separate in God's heaven holy and high and mighty and, and away from us, distant, but comes in dropping in occasionally to oil the machine or to make a repair or something. But by and large the machine works by itself and we, we don't really need God because the machine can function. And I guess that's a lot of how the world operates. God's out there somewhere and maybe answers our prayers or The mechanistic universe is really about everything being individual. And if there is something broken, well, you go in and fix it. If a child is naughty in the classroom, take the child out of the classroom, punish the child or talk to the child and put the child back and everything will work. Uh, if someone takes drugs, you, you call in the police and they deal with it. It's a criminal offence. They're arrested, they're charged, they're questioned and there's a fine or a sentence or maybe some rehabilitation and then they're put back into society. If someone does something wrong, they're put in prison, fixed up and put back, you know. It's, it's that kind of thinking. We punish or we correct, fix or replace. All the while that I was learning about mechani mechanistic physics, mechanical physics in, in high school, the world of physics was changing dramatically. It had been changing since Einstein and his theories on relativity. He and his colleagues ushered in a new way of thinking, a new world of, of physics, quantum physics. And what we're discovering in quantum physics is that everything is connected. The world is not an autonomous series of parts, individual parts and bits, but is a relationship. A relationship that holds everything together. There's this beautiful little, I, I guess it was a theoretical experiment for Einstein, Podolsky and Rosen early on, where they surmised that if you took a, a particle and it decayed into two other particles that were related, twins, if one was 20, spinning one way, the other would spin the opposite direction. And if you change the spin of this, you change the spin of that instantaneously. Whether that was before you were in the lab or you took one to the dark side of the moon and held one here. If you change the spin of this, this would change instantly. And Einstein hated this theory because it, it went against his concept of speed, of light being the, the fastest thing. Nothing could exceed the speed of light. And yet, these, if this was true, quantum entanglement, then that communication between these two particles was faster than the speed of light. The spooky science at a distance, he called it. Strange stuff. And then subsequent experiments have proven this. In other words, there's a relationship between these particles. They're not separate entities. And something intrinsic happens, connects them at any distance. And more and more, as, as quantum mechanics and physics are studied, the world is changing. Changing from a mechanistic universe with God at the top out there somewhere and all the parts in a machine to this relationship where everything is held in a deep and profound relationship. Where what happens to me affects someone else. Or, for example, when I was at college, we, we went into, a, into communities to study, to listen, to learn and listen. And a few of us went into one, one place and, and we went to the courthouse. Having never been to a court, we went to see what happens there. And this man had been um, charged or arrested with, uh, for shoplifting. He'd gone into a shop with money in his pocket to buy a belt. He found the belt he wanted. Instead of paying for it, he put it in his pocket and walked out. He was caught. He was charged. 
He was taken to court. The defence said, look, he's never done this before. Um, he never would do it again. It's out of character for him. The only thing he can say in defence is that he had this really bad fight with his wife before he left home and he was upset. And he just did this stupid thing. The magistrate had no choice but to slap a fine on him and wrap him across the knuckles. He pay, he'd paid for the belt. Go away and don't do it again. And as I thought about that, that's the me mechanistic universe. Person's broken, fix them, put them back in. But a relational universe would say, when this guy's arrested, okay, you've got the money, pay for the belt, make restitution to the shopkeeper. Then, what's going on in your life that causes you to do this? What's the influence? He needed to go and talk to someone about his relationship. He needed to go and sort out what was happening for him in his life. That was the issue, not stealing the belt. And that's the relational kind of way of dealing with it. Looking at a child in a classroom, not just as the, the symptoms of what they do that misbehaves, but what's going on in their life? How is that impacting them? What are the relationships and, and what's happening in their classroom, in the school? What's causing this? What's, what's the relational element? As Nico and I walked this morning, walking through the, the, the bushland along the track of Tungabi Creek, seeing the trees, gums and others and plants and the, the birds singing and, and sitting in the trees and feeding on the fruits and the nectars of the reptiles and lizards that live down by the lake and the, the eels and the fish in the creek and the ducks that come and of all these things that live together and related and how they're connected with one another. And how when I'm walking in there, I feel connected to everything else. That the sun that, that comes through, the blue sky and the clouds warms me. I'm dependent on that sun. And it's millions or trillions or whatever it is of, of hydrogen that's burned, of tons of hydrogen that's burned every day to keep me warm and give light to this earth and this solar system gives us energy of life, it keeps us going. We're connected. And that's what the deep reading of the Hebrew Scriptures and the Christian Scriptures and other sacred readings tell us. That we're all connected, interconnected and held together in this, this luminous web, as some people call it, this luminous web of wonder and mystery that holds us. And I was reading the, one of the readings for this week that that beautiful poetic opening to the Hebrew Scriptures of Genesis 1, where there is this trinity of love, the Creator, the Christ or the Word and the Spirit. The Spirit hovers over the chaos and brings order. And then the Word goes out from God, the Word of creativity. Out of this relational community of love flows this deep love that, that creates let there be light, and there's light and darkness. Let there be day and night. Let there be waters over the earth and land and seas and oceans and rivers and streams, mountains and valleys and plains. And Let there be vegetation, plants and trees and vegetables and fruits, microorganisms and bacterium and all the other things that, that are part of our earth soil and the humus that gives life to everything. Fill the oceans with, with sea creatures, great and small, in the deepest depths and in the shallows. And then fill the earth with its creatures, its animals, and birds fill the skies. And then, then the riskiest part of all, God says, let us create humans in our own image. In our image, let us create them. Let us, this relational trinity, this community of love, creates human beings in the image of God and fills us with the Spirit of God. And the risk is that we can make decisions for ourselves. We can choose to live in community, in relationship with everything else, or we can do our own thing. We can build our own hierarchies of power, we can accumulate our own wealth for ourselves. 
and deny others the chance of life. And we do all these things. Human beings have made choices that have been very bad for ourselves and for the earth and its creatures. And we continue to do this. Global warming, the environmental crisis, wars and famines and denying people food and resources to live. But in this wonderful story, this wonderful poem that opens up this wonder of creation, everything arises out of this one entity, this God, this trinity of love, which is deep and profound mystery and wonder. Everything emanates out and is given life and sustenance and, and being and breath and vitality and energy and held in this wonder by God who is in and between and through and around, who is in the spaces between us, who fills us. Whether we realise it or not, God gives us life and breath and being. This is the God we speak of, really. This is the God that the Hebrew Scriptures, the Christian Scriptures and other, other Scriptures speak of and point us to and celebrate the God who loves us. Because in all of this, God says, it is very good. Looks at the creation and the wonder and says, it is good. We are good. In, in another beautiful reading from the, the Psalms, Psalm 8, the psalmist speaks of the wonder of God. How excellent is your name in all the earth. In everything you are God, wondrous. Who am I, little human being, that you would think of me, that you would know me? that you would love me. And yet that's the reality. God knows us all and holds us all in wonder and love. My wife Susan does um, sewing and tapestries and, and quilting. Her latest interest really is cross-stitch. And she takes this matrix, gauze, this grid material, and into it sews threads of different colours and, and as she's making this cross stitch, it's hard to know what it's going to look like. But at the end, all you can see are these different colour threads forming a picture, a pattern, a story. You don't see the gauze that holds it all together. The gauze is this matrix, this web, this thing that holds the stitches. But what you see are the individual stitches all coming together in a relationship of colour and pattern to form a picture, a whole. That's how I imagine the world to be, that we're all part of this deep web, this deep matrix of energy, of life, of being, of wonder, of love that is God. Deeper and more profound than we can comprehend, holding us together in connected relationship. This is the God we celebrate, the God who loves us and knows us, the God who holds us together and wants us to love one another and to celebrate life together, to understand our deep connections and to live into them so that the whole world flourishes with life and wonder and joy and hope. And that's the way of God, the promise of God, the life of God, and that's the presence of God all around us. Amen.